Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and a couple of weeks ago I got an email from a manufacturer that uh, we haven't heard about before which is called the B Seed and they have a tons of smart home stuff and they asked me if I want to review one of their products and since I'm reviewing a lot of Zigbee stuff nowadays I thought I'm going to review this uh, Zigbee European socket. So obviously this product is not going to be very interesting for any of my American viewers or well anywhere else outside the, um, outside Europe because I checked their website and they only have this European model so there is no matching US model or UK model or Australian model so it is really just uh, um, you know could be interesting for for the markets that use this type of uh, uh, plug or this type of socket and uh, I like these type of sockets because well you know everything is integrated into the socket so instead of having just a regular socket and maybe use one of these small uh, either Wi-Fi or Zigbee modules to make it smart well everything is packaged in here so you just have you know less uh, it just makes it easier to use this and as you can see this is a Zigbee model and then this also does energy monitoring so it is going to measure how much power you are drawing through this socket of course you can turn it on and off remotely it has all the features like uh, power on state so it can remember when the power comes back to turn this socket on or off or go to the last state you can customize this small led and you can even do a child lock on this button so uh, your child won't be able to manually switch this on and off but other than that it is a zigbee socket the very good thing about this is uh, that it uses 16 amps uh, well a 16 amp relay which means that it would be suitable for all of the uh, well European sockets where we tend to have 16 amp relays uh, or 16 amp circuit breakers for our socket circuits or maybe somebody has less but I think probably 16 is uh, is more um, typical and even though it you know it is a US uh, sorry a European socket it works from 100 to 240 volts 50 and 60 Hertz but obviously you won't be able to really use this in the US because well there is hard to plug into anything like this and what you cannot physic what I cannot physically show you is that um, they have four different uh, color versions so there is this white one there is a black there is a golden and there is also a gray socket so when I go through the listing we can see images of that and you can buy this in this uh, single socket model and there are models where you have two three four and five sockets next to each other obviously in that listing you will get five of these but then you will get a plate which can you know well this uh, so you get this frame which goes across all five of them and um, when you have five of them or even two of them the, uh, the sockets are not right next to each other so there is a big well not a big but there is a gap so like like the next socket is going to be here so you need the wall so you would need wall sockets uh, where you have those you know the round pieces you know separate so it's not like one continuous uh, hole in the wall let's quickly review the uh, the listings and I also want to show you the two different versions that uh, I mentioned previously so this is the the product that I've received so that's the one with the energy monitoring and uh, as you can see there these are the different colors that you can choose so there is the white which I have there is a black there is a golden and there is a gray and when you select it there is no specific picture shown so I can't really tell you how they look like so maybe if I just scan through the picture so that's a version of the black and that's probably the, the gray so it's more like a medium gray but it's nice that the internal is also gray so it matches the um, uh, well and it's the same for the black okay so that's actually nice uh, that they use the same colors for the uh, the border or the frame and the and the actual insert as well and quickly you can see the prices here so this is for single double three sockets and then four and then five I mean you need loads of space for five uh, definitely and there are a couple of uh, you know coupon codes here that you can use for um, just to lower the price when you are ordering multiple and this is the uh, the listing for the one which doesn't have a 
uh, the energy monitoring. So it's really just only a, a single euro difference. So instead of 27.68, it's 26.90. Uh, so it's even less than. It. But physically, they look exactly the same. You can see that the stock images are also the same. The only thing, well, the only small difference I see here is that obviously they haven't included an image which you know shows the consumption, how the consumption changes here. But uh, that that's fine. Is that that's the that's the real difference. Everything else uh, should be the same. I think I've already mentioned what you really need to do need to know about this uh, model. I mean, uh, just to go through some of the details again, it's uh, it has this front cover that you can pop off. So it can be you put a screwdriver here and then you just uh, pop it off. And as you can see, it has this uh, plastic back and then there is this glass front. Um, so it looks quite stylish uh, because of this glass. It collects fingerprints. So yeah, you have to live with that. And uh, what you could already see from the listings is that when you order the the one which has like two sockets or three sockets, the, the socket is not right here, but sort of right here. So I think you need those kind of uh, round wall sockets where you put them next to each other with a short connector piece. So it's not like those big, big cutouts. Uh, so you're definitely going to take up uh, more space as in uh, compared to like a usual double socket where the next socket is right here. But uh, ah, that's the way they designed. I don't have any issues with that. Other than that, I am not seeing any certification here for, you know, TÜV or any European certification. So this is, that's the, not the European CE, but that's the China export thing. Um, and other than that, I see an FCC logo here, but nothing really else. And I don't see anything on the box either. And it looks like this is quite a generic box because even the current rating is like 10, 13 and 16 here. So obviously this is 16 amp. Um, so yeah, there is nothing here in the instructions, you, which comes in German and English. Uh, it is again a very generic instruction because for example, the wiring shows the wiring for the switch. So probably they are supplying the same documentation for the switches and the sockets as well. But I guess they have the same physical dimensions and uh, or they just, maybe they just uh, accidentally put the wrong documentation in my, because it says 1000 watts per gang, which is definitely not 16 amps. So I think probably there is a mix up here, but that's sort of the documentation that you can expect. It shows you how you, you know, pair it and well, the basics. I mean, for a socket, it's, it's really going to be simple because as you can see, you have three terminals. So live, neutral and the earth. So you just connect the live, neutral and the earth and you are done. Your thing is working. It has these single um, sockets. So if you want to daisy chain, then um, that's not going to be easy. I mean, getting two one and a half mil cables here in order to daisy chain the multiples yeah, I think it's going to be a little bit of a struggle, especially with the insulation. So you might need to find a wire ferrule that you can put two one and a half mil um, wire in and crimp them together and then put them in at once. Yeah, I'm not too sure about that. And I'm pretty sure that when you buy the, you know, the two or the three uh, socket version, you are getting multiple of these. So it's not going to be internally connected. I don't think that they would do that. And also this back, uh, this uh, gray plate that you can see here, actually that is made of metal and you can find screw holes on each side and also in the corner. So you will probably also need the type of uh, wall sockets, which have um, um, some recesses for a screw to go into. And that's how you're going to secure. So it's not using those clamp uh, things that is also quite, uh, typical in European switches and light sockets. And probably just one more word about, you know, compliance and that stuff. So as I said, I can't find anything other than this China export logo here and the FCC logo. There is probably, you can see there is a German uh, company and address here and the email address. So if you want to ask anything spe specific, probably you can ask them, but this is probably just a distributor. And uh, the only other thing I want to say is that they, it has the child protection standard. So you can see that the, uh, the, uh, the live and the neutral holes are covered. So you can't easily just insert uh, 
something into it and get access to the live voltage which also means that it uh, it takes a fairly bit of effort to plug anything in because you have to push those uh, things away but again i think nowadays this is uh, sort of standard in the european sockets okay so first i'm going to test it in the two-year system well it is primarily designed for the two-year ecosystem and as you can see, I'm using my BWIS1 as a Zigbee gateway. So that's my Zigbee gateway, and I added the device to it. So by the, by the way, when you turn it on for the first time, the LED is going to blink to indicate that it is in pairing mode already. So that's, uh, yeah, that's fine. You just um, uh, start the pairing. And if, it, if you've waited long enough or too long and it has gone out of pairing, then you can just long press this button and it's going to be back. So that's fine. Let's uh, check this out. So yeah, you can operate it like that, uh, very easy. And as you can see, there is an indicator. So this LED is uh, at the moment, it's showing the state of the output. So it doesn't show anything and then it, it turns blue when uh, the, uh, the power is on. And uh, yeah, we can see right in the main screen that we have a couple of, uh, you know, buttons on the on the lower part of the screen. We have the power as well, so you can touch this power button, or you can just you know click in the middle of the screen that will turn it on. And then on on the timer we have a various timers. So we have the regular schedules. So so this is when you want to turn the um, the power on and off at a certain time. So let's say I want the power to turn off at 2.08 and then I want it to turn off at uh, um, yeah, 10 o'clock in the evening and every single day. Uh, okay, maybe these days. So these are the things that you can set up. Come on, where is my other one? Power off. Did I not press the save button? Okay, um, so anyway, you can have uh, a few of these schedules, and yeah, I can just delete them if I don't want them. It looks like it takes a little bit of time to uh, for this to refresh. Maybe this goes up the, either up the server or actually goes to the device. I, I can't really tell from this. You also have this countdown, so if you turn the, the output on, and let's say you want to turn it off after four minutes, then you have this countdown. Yeah, it's nice. You have this circulate, so this is the on-off. You can set up on-off cycles, so you can set that I want this device to on-off cycle between, you know, these times and whatever. And you want the on duration to be, let's say, five minutes and the off duration is, I don't know, 55 minutes. So basically it's going to be on for five minutes every single hour. Um, again, if you want to operate a pump or something like that, it's actually a, it's a nice feature. Uh, I don't think I'm going to use a lot. And then you can also do some random ones, which is again, from start to the end time, and then the number of days, it's going to randomize. I thought there is going to be some parameters for the randomization, but I guess in within these periods, it's going to turn on and off. So maybe you can use this to simulate um, like if somebody would be at home. So, you know, things turn on and off uh, at sort of randomly. So yeah, nice feature. Uh, and then we have the electricity function. So this is where it measures the, the electric usage. And then for this, I'm going to plug in my power station, which is not fully charged yet. Oopsie. So it has the child protection, so this is why it was a little bit difficult to plug it in. And now you can see that the power goes up. So we are drawing about 100 watts and, um, well, 177. And then obviously these counter is, go well, the total kilowatt hours is going to go up. And I believe this total kilowatt hours is going to be an accumulated one. So now it's going to start counting because I just turn on the machine, well, turn on the socket for the first time, but I think this one is going to be an accumulated uh, kilowatt hours. And then you can also create, you can also have a, a, a graph. 
and then by the looks of it it's going to uh, keep a record every single day so you would it will show you how much you have consumed on a particular day and probably you can go back I think I mean I've seen this user interface for um, many other products and I think they usually keep uh, a history of, of for for the last last year or 365 days so yeah it shows the uh, the main things uh, um, you know how much you are drawing from this socket and that's it I mean yeah it measures power consumption there is no well there is no separate timer on that so if you want to measure power consumption for a specific period I guess you have to come here and then note the number in the middle um, in the beginning of the period and the end of the period but yeah that's fine and within the settings it's it's just the usual stuff like okay you know share the device and then group it and um, check for firmware updates but um, that's pretty much it and if I turn off the unit then obviously the power is going to go down I guess it takes a little bit of yeah it took a couple of seconds to update but uh, yeah it does what I would expect and it works just fine okay and let's have a quick look at how it works in the Zigbee 2 MQTT I've done the pairing already and you can see this device um, <clears throat> up here or actually down here and um, you can see that it appears as a 2 yard you know TS011F plug which is I mean fine I mean you can find these type of plugs like which is very similar to the uh, Blitzwolf plug which also does uh, power measurement and as you can see that uh, the type is router and well it is supported but the thing which really interested uh, what we are interested in is uh, the different you know um, what it exposes so obviously we have a control to turn it on and off and then you can see that it has turned off although the, the LED is really small so you can't I'm not sure if you can see that and uh, what I meant I forgot to mention about in the previous section is that even on the two-year screen there was a setting screen and you can see here that you can control whether the power on state is going to be on off or restore so it's like the last state so this is where the power comes back and you have a mode for the indicator as well so that's the small blue LED so you have the option to completely turn it off whether it should be on when the output is on like now or it should be the other way around so it, it is lit when it's off or whether it should be on all the time so yeah it is working and yeah we can see power current voltage and uh, the accumulated energy so it has moved to 0.01 .01 kilowatt hours at the moment and we have this child law feature as well so if you lock it then this button is no longer going to operate the output and I think the documentation says you have to press it four times to unlock it so that's uh, to prevent your kids you know turning the uh, socket on and off and we have a link quality yeah I mean it works we don't really have uh, we don't really need a lot of other things and you can see that uh, the same thing comes through in uh, in MQTT as well so I can see the you know the various uh, you know the current the energy the power uh, so yeah we just got a, an update so now it is uh, drawing 174 watts uh, because I think I have my power station plugged in and um, yeah you still have um, a topic for the power on state the child lock and the indicator mode as well and then you can see the voltage so yeah it works as expected um, it worked sort of like out of the box uh, as soon as I paired it it was um, able to I mean Zigbee to MQGD was able to recognize it and definitely it supports it so I'm quite happy as you can see with this you can easily integrate it to Home Assistant if you are running uh, Zigbee to MQTT but I think that would conclude my uh, review of this uh, Zigbee European socket uh, this particular model which comes with a power metering option if you are interested in this product I'm going to leave uh, links to this one and the, uh, the one which doesn't have the energy metering in the video description but that will be all for today thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video